Hey everybody, it's Pete Carmesino here at Chaikin Analytics. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at our firm. And each and every week, I kind of go over things here on Stock Charts TV, the halftime show. We talk about markets. We talk about just uh, some small things that are occurring, maybe on uh, some of the indexes and some of, especially in the fixed income area that uh, you know I've been using and uh, to our advantage to help us kind of navigate down markets and up markets and sideways markets and volatile markets. So um, everything kind of begins and ends there for me. I think it's just a three-pronged you know, approach. It's, it's bonds, it's rates. Obviously, those are very connected, and so is the dollar. And then everything else comes after that. Um, you start to see the sectors change trends based on the activity in all of those areas. So I'll definitely go over the usual suspects that I talked about, You know, the NDX, the SPX, the TLT. Um, we'll look at some names here that are most active. And today, I want to take a little bit more time and talk about the Chaken Power Gauge and how you can get access to it here on Stock Charts, uh, the ACP platform, and just show you where it's at and what it looks like, and you know what, how you can learn more about it. We'll go over it very quickly, um, but there's you know all kinds of material out there uh, in the open uh, internet. You can Google it and find all kinds of information about our Chaken Analytics um, uh, Power Gauge here. But I specifically want to go over you know, how you can view it here on the ACP platform. So. Um, just a lot going on. We got a Fed meeting, obviously, coming this week, and you know, after our massive rally yesterday, which is no no doubt a short covering, a lot of people offsides one way, and you know, potentially maybe wanted to to take some things off the table before the Fed. It looks like it just got out of control, became a pretty big rally. Um, obviously, the UAW strikes ending, all that, all kind of added to that catalyst, and so nothing happens in a vacuum. It's going to affect a lot of different things here. And we're still calling for rates above 5% on my watch, so to speak. Five and a quarter looks to be sort of the next move higher. I mean, that's pretty obvious. It's already around 5% on the 10-year I'm talking about. But I think, um, you know, we'll look at TLT and we'll look at the at the uh, 10-year rate just to, just to get a quick update. I know I just did this last week, but I find when we look at these week to week, we can really get a sense of the trends and where they're going. So, all right, that's enough of me talking. Let's get going here. All right. Um, you know, I always kind of remind folks that you can follow me here on Twitter. It's at Pete Carmesino. You know, I, I put out some things. Just today, I was kind of commenting on some things. Uh, uh, Danielle DiMartino Booth, I think she's excellent. You should follow her as well. Um, you know, she's talking about how bad things are going to get in the housing market. You know, I don't disagree. I think prices are going to come down there. And I also think that uh, what's going to happen is there's going to be a wave of selling, potentially, potentially, due to some other things that are happening out there in the market. It could be higher unemployment. But I think cash buyers will come in uh, and start to support that market. But I think at much lower prices, that's unfortunate if you're in a position where you have to sell. Um, but you know, a lot of folks are not in that position, hopefully. And then there are still people out there that don't need uh, a mortgage to purchase a house. Um, there's fewer of them in the world, but there are still plenty of them to go around and probably help support the higher end market that is. You know, potentially here in Florida, you know, on the coastline, there's a lot of obviously beautiful properties up and down the East Coast and, you know, other parts of the country as well. But I think that could be seen. I'm just saying that today, that's just my call. Um, you know, we're talking about election year, the Fed pause and all that. I, I keep commenting that I think unemployment is going to rise. I think the strikes for higher wages, you know, ultimately result in some job losses along the way. Um, then rates will come down to save jobs. It's a cycle. It's a wash, rinse, repeat, and you can't stop it. That's the way it works. Um, so just be prepared for it. So, you know, I was taught, I wanted to just show you this, you know, I pulled this up on first solar. This is, we talked about this. Uh, we have this free uh, newsletter you should absolutely subscribe to. Um, it's called the Power Feed, uh, chickenpowerfeed.com. You can just sign up for free. It's not, doesn't cost anything. You know, I just went in and I picked on some analysts a little bit um, just a few weeks ago talking about First Solar sort of upgrading this thing at around 162 uh, and change, saying that the market was mispricing the stock and all that jazz. Uh, and meanwhile, if you look at what the stock has been doing, it's, you know, that hit a new low when I posted this about 135. It's trading higher, I think 137 today. But, you know, this is a stock that's been in a downtrend since the June timeframe. So I get it. I understand what analysts are doing, but you have to put price on your side. And that's what Chaken Analytics does. That's what I do. That's what any good trader, investor, you know, someone who's you know considering all aspects of the market. I mean, if you loved it at 162, you got to really love it at 135, and you may even be able to love it at 120. I don't know where it's going to go, but that seems to be 
the trajectory at this point anyway. So follow me here. You get some other antidotes um, that we talked about. So um, I talked about, um, and I had gold up here. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this real quick. I'm going to go to market scanner. Here we go. And just look at some most active names, right? So you know how to do this. Right here, if you see along the ACP platform, you see that little thing that says the chicken power gauge right there. If you hover over it, you click on that. Obviously, I have access to it. And it's going to show me um, these stocks that I have access to. Now, I wanted to do something with a different grid line. No grid. I'm saying uh, with a different layout, no grid lines. So just a 50, 200 day moving average here and the power gauge, right? So here's Amgen. The stock's moving lower. We're bullish on the name. But if you look, you know, earnings were negative, right? Now, they came out with earnings today. Um, the stock's down three and a half percent. I don't know exactly what the outcome was. We can find that out in a minute. But my point to you is, is that we were negative in that one aspect, bullish on other areas, especially technicals, and rightfully so. Look at the stock has moved from 219 to almost $300 a share, roughly 290 or so. Um, that's a big run in just, a, uh, you know, well, actually 200, roughly 210, uh, 209, 210. To about 290. That's a big move, right? 40 some odd percent move. So there you go. You could see the ratings here, right? If I go to Caterpillar, they had earnings as well. We were neutral on the stock and here's why. It was below its long-term trend. And you can't see that. This is not our trend. This is just a simple 200 day moving average, but it's very close to that trend line. And because it broke down, that's when it turned Neutral plus, and all that means is a good company. Don't forget, this is a company report card, but it's telling you that the stock is moving lower. And once it broke that trend, obviously we weren't alone in thinking that. But you know, when the earnings came out, it just kind of exacerbated. So, uh, you know, you've got here's another one, uh, VFC down 13 percent. We've been bearish on this name, and I'm telling you, note, you know, this these stocks tend to really. I don't want to use the word crash, but capitulate, whatever, something nicer than crash. They really tend to move lower in an extreme fashion. <laughs> That's another definition of a crash. Um, at the end of the ranges, right? So this thing is bottoming. Obviously, this is uh, hit a new low here. Um, and we're talking a multi-year low. I'm squeezing this chart back as far as I can, 2017 or so. Um, and this is VFC Corp, right? The discretionary clothing, accessories, things like that. Uh, stock just didn't make it. Now, the power gauge kept you out of it. So if you don't have access to it, go go get access to it. If you want to learn more about it, you see the little button there. It says click here. See where my cursor changes to an I click here. And where does it take you? Lo and behold, to shakenanalytics.com. And you can learn more about the power gauge rating. Okay. We rate roughly, oh, 5,000 stocks or more. And this is what we do. We look at all of these aspects. It's a 20-factor model. Uh, we use these, we weight them certain ways. Uh, you can see down here, this is the technical aspect. These three are sort of, we like to call them the fundamental aspects, even though there's some estimates um, and analyst rating trends in here. They're definitely fundamentally based. And that's about 85% of the rating. Down here is about 15%. And that's why we use indicators on the charts as well to kind of tell us, you know, if what we're seeing is real, right? In other words, we still have to use outside indicators. So we also rate ETFs. Unfortunately, the, the rating here on stock charts doesn't offer the ETF rating, but the stocks are very important. And I know a lot of us here are focused on that as well. So here's a kind of a breakdown. If you go to that link, you can learn all about the Chake and Power Gauge. You know, I forget to talk about this once in a while because I'm so enamored with what's going on in the market. Um, I, you know, I wanted to make sure that I did a shout out to how you can get this and how you should be following this if you don't have it, it's not even that expensive. I think it's 39 bucks a year. So jump on it and uh, go get it. All right, jumping over to the Jakin system. I wanted to just look at Amgen and we'll also look at VFC. Now, Amgen was a bullish rated stock. Now, this happens, folks. We talk about this, or at least I do, all the time. I talk about earnings being um, like the, the analogy is getting into the ring with the invisible man. I don't care if you're Mike Tyson or the next best boxer in the world. If you can't see your opponent, it's going to be hard to win. And the opponent here is guidance, unforeseen things happening on the call, whatever the case may be, even though earnings might have done well, which it looks like they did, um, the guidance, whatever happened on this call changed things, right? And now it's threatening a trend change. It's not 
close on the relative strength, but it's oversold. Money flow is weakening. You can see that into the print, but we're below that long-term trend. So I would tell you it's a weak industry. The trend was rated strong as of yesterday. Tomorrow, I would assume, I could be wrong, that that would change to weak only because it's breaking below the 200-day uh, double exponential moving average that we use. That's a mouthful. Let's look at uh, VFC Corp, the one that was bearish for quite some time. And you can see, I mean, look, if I go back to the five year, we, you know, this has not been bullish since 2019, right back here. And it's really been in a push and pull between neutral and bearish. And it only turns neutral because it's going above the long-term trend. So we let price override our rating, right? Because we know that the market is going to win out no matter what we think or anybody else thinks. Same thing on first solar. No matter what other analysts think, the price action is going to dominate what's happening in the stock. And even though you got a, a rebound here in First Solar, this stock has been in a downtrend, as I said to you earlier in the call here on the video, since June 7th, um, all the way down to roughly that low of, gosh, what was the low? Uh, 132. Okay. So a new 52 week low on First Solar, even though big banks are telling you to buy it up here, the stock is priced to the downside, follow the price action, all right? So I just wanted to look, point out those two things. I'm gonna jump over to the ACP platform and look at some of our sectors uh, and some of our indexes and then call this a day. All right, I'm gonna start with the NASDAQ 100. We talked about this before now. I adjusted this, I didn't have this planned. I just wanted to see what the drawdown was at the recent low um, here on what, the 26th. Um, I just wanted to see what that was looking like. So that was last week. So it was down about 12% from the August high, not from the all-time highs, but from the August high. And I said to you, we're still looking for this 14% now. Am I going to quibble over 2%? Maybe not. But I still think it's possible and, and it might even test this 200-day. And lo and behold, look what that 200-day is trying to do, right? It's trying to get the 14,000. I'm, I'm not talking about it like it's got, you know, uh, and, and it, you know sort of a, a, an agenda, right? To get to the 14,000, but it certainly looks like it's going to. And if it does get there, it's close enough for me. It may use that as a bouncing point. So the 14,000 can be a pivot anyway. If the 200 in the way, you know, it might help, but it could still, don't, don't think it can't drop down here and bounce up back above the 200 day too. So I still think that gap's going to fill. That's just me. So that's where the NASDAQ stands. And let's look at the S&P. Um, same kind of chart. I adjusted these today. Um, I went and looked to see what the total drawdown was. And, you know, everyone's talking about this is a correction, anything 10% or more, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Um, but I still think the average correction we're going to see is somewhere in the teens. And both the NASDAQ and the S&P are calling for about 14% or maybe 13.5% between those ranges. And both of those spots are, are gap fills. And now the S&P has already broke the 200. The NASDAQ has not. But look what's happening. Look where it's rallying. Look at this. 4174. We've been talking about this 4172. I'll, I'll give it a range of three points either way, right? You got to give me some standard deviation. So 75 to 70 or so, roughly in that in that point range. And what do you have? You've got this thing just pushing back, right? You know, back and back filling a little bit before potentially another leg. Now I'm not an Elliott Wave guy, but if I was counting this one, two, three, four, five, this could be done or maybe I'm wrong and there's other waves in, in between here. And this is maybe the start of a new trend the other way, but I still feel like, you know, some news could come out and cause this to push lower. And I talked to, um, you know, one of the folks that I'm very friendly with, and even if that was to happen, even if capitulation would happen at that level, that 13 and a half percent pullback, it still would not screw the wave count up. So that's pretty interesting just uh, you know, as an antidote. So right, let's go over to, um, what am I looking at here? I wanna look at the 10 year. Also wanna look at gold too, right? Um, look, we talked about 5% being the number. I still think five and a quarter is gonna be the number, um, but I think 5% was obviously the, you know, sort of the natural segue for this massive trend that we've been seeing and TLT's just taking it on the chin every day almost. Uh, a little reprieve in the last couple of days, but it does not look like it's changing trend. And if I go to TLT real quick while I'm here, let me just look at that. It's up a half a percent today. Not that big of a deal. Um, let me look at the other one here. 
Yeah, this is the one I wanted to look at. So there's my line on the sand. I got 520, five and a quarter, call it what you want. That's sort of the target. Um, it's obviously hit the top of this range. We were talking about taking it off here. Uh, so, you know, there were things, I'm sorry, not there. This is weekly. Hold on. Let me go to daily real quick. There you go. So we were talking right around, I don't know, 10, 10 or so to lighten the short a little bit, but keep some on for the full ride. I still think it's going to happen. So kind of looking at that right now. Um, let's look at gold very quickly. 2000, right? So everyone's talking about this as the next obvious spot. I have 2200. I, you know, that's just a target that I built. This is an older chart. I had a lot of trend lines back here that are sort of meaningless at this point. Um, but, you know, I'm watching the S&P. I'm looking at the dollar. To me, gold looks like it's starting a new uptrend. Sure, it's already at 2000. The high is somewhere around, we'll call it almost 2100 or so. I got 2200 for lots of different reasons, but that's just the number that I came up with with the way I use sort of Fibonacci uh, rules and extensions and things like that. So 2200 is still my target. I'm going to stick to it. Uh, I haven't talked about it in quite some time because it's been doing nothing. So <laughs> I try not to talk about it because if it's uh, trending sideways, there's really no trend at all. So, um, and we'll look at oil real quick. Now, oil coming down. Right. Supplies were up a little bit. Uh, I still think we're going to trend higher in this name. 80 should be support. Uh, gaps are already filled. Looks like a pretty clean chart and the trend is still higher. Obviously, people are talking about 150 because of the tumultuous and volatile situation in the Middle East. I don't see that, but, you know, um, I hope I'm right and I hope they're wrong for 150. But 150 puts that way up here. Uh, levels we haven't seen since, gosh, the 2008 time frame. So let's hope uh, that doesn't happen. All right, folks, that's all we have for today. Don't forget to check, to, uh, to check out the Chaykin Power Gauge there on the ACP platform. Go learn more about it. Uh, pick it up. Use it to your advantage. And obviously, hopefully my videos where you can see the Chaykin system and how to use the ACP platform, uh, Chaykin Power Gauge on there. You see how we kind of use them together. Uh, but if you have any more questions, you can go to our website, ask, uh, you know, get on the phone and ask some questions about all the other options that we offer here at Chaken Analytics. Again, follow me on Twitter, please. I really appreciate it. Give me some feedback. You know, I, I'm trying to be a little bit more active on there and speak my mind um, on some different topics that I have a little bit of insight on. But at the same time, um, I like to offer just some anecdotal evidence based on our process here and what I'm seeing here in the market. So Appreciate it. We'll talk to you. We'll see you next week. Take care. 